created session storage and we also created restriction for particular pages if a user is not logged in. But at the moment, the user only has the ability to log into our app if they go through the registration page rather than a login page. So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to be building up a login page for the user so that when they insert a username and password, it's compared to whatever we have in the database. And if it is correct, we're going to log the user in using Passport and then they can access all those restricted pages and so forth. So that's what we're going to be doing in this one. Let's go ahead and get started by first accessing register.handlebars over here. So within register.handlebars, we already have a form available for us. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to paste it within our login page right beneath our H2. We're just reusing our form basically. And you'll see that it provides to us our registration form. But we don't really need the email and we don't really need the re-enter password fields right here. So instead of including these, we're just going to go ahead and rip them out completely. We're going to grab our email and we're going to grab our re-enter password field. And if we save this, now you'll see we have a nice looking login form. So now we need to actually compare our user's username and password to what is available within the database. So rather than create an action for register, we want to make sure that we're creating an action for our login page. So we're making a post request to a URL of login like so. And since we're doing this, we now need something to actually process this request. So we need to head on over to index.js and you'll see this is where we're processing our post request for our register form, but we want to make sure that we're processing this for our login form as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this first line of code right here and paste it beneath our login get request. So since I just copied the first line of code, I need to make sure that I'm closing this out like so. And we're going to do something a little different. Rather than call this callback function when we make a post request to this URL, we're going to be making an authentication request using Passport dot authenticate. And this function takes two arguments. So the first argument it's going to take is we need to specify what kind of strategy do we want to employ with Passport. So since we're making use of a local database, the strategy that we want to employ is called local. And then the second argument it's going to take is an object. And this object is going to include a few properties. The first property is going to be called success redirect. And this is going to determine where should we redirect the users if they successfully log in. So we want to make sure that we redirect the users to their profile page if it is successful. But if they are not successful, if there is a failure, the failure redirect is going to send them back to the login page. So if they fail, we're going to go head on over to this route and we're going to render the login page, just sending them back to where they started. So we need to make sure that this is a post request to login rather than register. So now whenever a user submits information here and clicks submit, we're going to call this passport authenticate method. And since we're employing a local strategy, we now need to implement a specific function, a specific snippet of code that's going to test whether or not our user's username and password matches up with whatever is in the database. So to do this, we need to head on over to app.js and we're going to be adding a little bit of code here. We're going to be adding one more passport package. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And within here, let's say yarn add passport dash local. And this is going to give us all the code that we need to actually make a test to ensure that our user's username and password match up with whatever we have in a local database. So once we have this installed, we now need to actually include it within our app. So the code for this, we're going to head on over to Passport Documentation. Let me show you how to get there. We're just going to Google Passport JS, click on the first result, click Documentation, and we're going to search for local strategy, all one word. And it's going to take you to the documentation which you need in order to get started with Passport Local Strategy. So what we're going to do is we're going to be copying this line of code right here. We're going to be pulling in the local strategy and we'll paste it right beneath Passport. Make sure you assign this to a variable. We're going to save that and then we're going to say we want to make use of the local strategy. So we're going to go all the way down here right beneath our routes and we're going to paste in this line of code and really all we need here is we don't need all of this nonsense we don't need the user find one we're going to be employing our own methodology so we can get rid of that all we really need here is this return done null user function and we can get rid of user as well we'll go ahead and replace this with a string for the time being and within here i'm going to console log out our user's username and our user's password just to make sure that they're being passed through 
then I'll go ahead and reformat everything really quickly. And now you may be wondering how the flow is working. So we're submitting our user's username and password to a route within index.js. And then we're calling passport authenticate with a local strategy, which in return goes over to app.js. And then it calls this right here, this function within local strategy. So username and password are going to be pulled automatically from here as long as these fields have a name of username and password, which they both do already. So if we submit this, we should see a console log of username and password, and really this done function, as long as there is some information over here within the second argument, it's going to count this as a successful authentication request. If we want to make sure that this is not successful, we would go ahead and replace this with false instead. Since we're not actually testing whether or not our username and password exists in the database just yet, we want to make sure that this is a false request. So let's go ahead and test things out. Let's click Submit. You'll see we're redirected here, which means the attempt was unsuccessful. But if we were to replace this with a string, meaning it is successful, save that, put some random information in here, you'll see that we're redirected to the profile page. And this is determined by the success redirect and the failure redirect. But really, we need to make sure that these actually exist first. So we're going to say that this is false for the time being. Let's go ahead and look in our console to make sure that the username and password are being displayed as well. So if we look within NodeMon, You'll see there they are. So indeed, we are passing our user's username and password through the local strategy. Now we really just need to make sure they actually exist in the database. So to make sure they exist in the database, we need to make a query. And to make a query, we need to pull in our database package. So we're going to be saying var. Let's call this a constant since this variable is not going to be changing at all. This constant is going to be called db. It's going to be equal to require db. And this is just going to be referencing our db file right here. So we're pulling in our database module. Now we need to actually make use of a query by saying db query. And then we want to select. So to actually test this out, to actually make sure that our username and password match up within a database, the first thing we need to do is retrieve our user's plain text password using the user's username. So if the user's username doesn't actually exist, well, we're not going to be able to get the user's password. And as a result, we're going to be redirecting the user back to the login screen. So first thing first, we need to make sure that the username exists, and if it does, we're going to be returning to ourselves the user's plain text password. And if we are able to retrieve the plain text password, we're then going to put it through a hashing function and compare it to the hash password actually available within the database. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and grab our user's password, our user's hash password. We're going to be saying, select our password from the user's table where the user's username is equal to the username that we're passing through via our form. Let's put this in an array. And if we're able to actually find this, we're going to say, call the following function. And inside of this function, we have a few arguments. We have an argument of error. We have our results, and we also have our fields. So if this was successful, if we were able to successfully grab our password from the database, well, we want to make sure that we're continuing onwards and then calling bcrypt to hash our plain text password and compare it to the password that we just pulled. But if we were unable to select a password, that means a username does not actually exist within the database. So first thing first, let's go ahead and do some error handling. Let's say if an error exists, if we had an error connecting to our database, then call done error. And done is provided by Passport. It's going to be taking care of all of our error management automatically. All we really need to do is pass through an error object if an error is occurring with our database connection. So that takes care of the database connection issues right here. But now we need a way to determine whether or not our user's username actually exists within the database. So if we are to be returned results and results is empty, meaning that we weren't returned a password, if results is empty, we can say if results.length is equal to zero and go ahead and call done and tell the user that authentication was unsuccessful. Otherwise, if we were able to find a password, if a username does exist, we're going to be continuing onwards. So we're going to be pasting this function right here for the time being. And just to test things out, we'll go ahead and replace false with a string, meaning that we have a successful login. So we want to test out the functionality that we just wrote. If results don't exist, then go ahead and cancel out the request, return them back to the login page. So if we save this and return back to our login page, and we go ahead and insert some dummy information, we should be redirected back here, which we are. But if we insert a legitimate username, 
Let's go ahead and look within our database, see what legitimate usernames we have. If we enter a legitimate username, such as testing, and I think I just created this one in my free time. So if you haven't created a username with testing, make sure that you register it under the register page. If we try a username of testing, and our password can be anything it wants right now because we're not testing for our password correctly. If we test this out, you'll see that we are indeed redirected to a profile page, meaning that we found some results. We we're able to grab a password, which is great. Now we need to make sure that our user's password that they're sending through via the login form actually matches up with the hash password that's available within the database. So let's go ahead and implement that now. So since the user is passing through their plain text password and what's available in the database is now hashed, we need a way to hash the user's plain text password again and then test to see whether or not it matches up with that big hash password in the database. So to do so, we're going to have to call upon the bcrypt package again. We already know that we have bcrypt installed, so we can just head on up to the top and we can require a package called bcrypt. And instead of putting this right beneath Express Validator, let's go ahead and put this beneath our authentication packages since this is involved with authentication. And this should not be bcrypt, it should be bcrypt, be creepy. <laughs> okay, so we have bcrypt being pulled in and we need to use this to hash up our user's plain text password. So to do this, we're going to say bcrypt.compare, and this is going to take three arguments. So the first argument we're going to pass through here is going to be the plain text password, which is just called password. We're going to compare this to a hash, and then we're going to return a callback function with an error and a response. So we don't have a hash variable as of yet, but really if you think about it, we're pulling the user's password from the database and that's already hashed. So all we need to put here is a variable called hash, which is equal to the results that we're pulling as long as a username and password are found in the database. So let's go ahead and save this right now. Let's go ahead and console log out our results to make sure that we're pulling in exactly what we think we're pulling in. We're just going to leave all this as so. I'm going to comment this out just to make sure things are functioning as expected. And now if I go ahead and test this out over here, testing was our username, password was QWERTY1. Exclamation point. If we submit this, it's going to go through because we still haven't implemented the password comparison just yet. But if we look within the terminal, we're being returned a password object. Really this should be instead of results with an index as zero, it should be results index zero, so we're selecting our password directly, but you'll see that our password is equal to a buffer. And really in order to fix this, in order to get the password in a readable string, we want to say to string like so. Okay, so let's test this out one more time. If we head on over to our login page, use a username of testing and a random password, we're redirected. But if we look within our terminal, this time we're being returned our user's hashed password, which is perfect. So we have our hash being stored, not within this hash constant just yet. We need to make sure that we're taking this, putting it right here so that we're storing our user's database password within this hash variable. And we are going to be using this bcrypt function to compare the user's plain text password to the hash password in the database. bcrypt is going to hash this automatically for us. And if there is a match, response is going to be equal to true. So if response is equal to, true, then we want to successfully log our user in similar to what we did within our registration page. So we're going to take this right here. And as long as the second argument is filled, we're going to successfully log our user in. It's going to call the passport login method for us automatically. So we're going to pass through a object with a property of user ID. And this is going to be equal to the ID which we'll be grabbing from the database. So let's go ahead and set it equal to a random ID. Let's just say 43 for the time being. We'll go ahead and grab the ID later on, but let's go ahead and test that this bcrypt compare functionality is actually working. So if we do find a password and the password's match, then we're going to be calling a successful passport authentication request. But if they don't, we'll add an else statement and we'll return done null false, meaning that the authentication request failed. So now we should have passport functionality implemented within our login form. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, we'll head on over to login. And if we insert testing with a random password this time, you'll see that we're redirected to the login page, which is perfect. But 
If we insert testing with a legitimate password, the password for this account is QWERTY1! We're now redirected to the profile page. So we now just implemented not only checking for our user's username, we also implemented checking for our user's password by hashing it up using bcrypt again. So really though, we're, we're passing through a user ID of 43 and this could be accessing anyone's account. So we wanna make sure that we're really only accessing with what's associated with whatever account we just queried. So we're not only going to be getting our user's password, we're also going to be returning the user's ID like so. So this will go ahead and put the ID within this results object. So all we need to do here is say, instead of returning 43, we're going to be returning our results object the results objects ID. Let's go ahead and test things out over here. Let's click login. Testing QWERTY1 exclamation point. And we look within our console, you'll see that our user has an ID of 43. I, I'm starting to think, no, okay. Does this user really have an ID of 43 within the database? Let me check really quickly. Let's go ahead and bring this on over here. Okay, so somehow the, the ID that I was using hard coding in here just happened to be the exact ID for the account that we've been testing this on. So that's a little weird, but if you test with one of these other ones, I think testing two is probably a better example. So I created another account called testing two, and you just saw that the ID was 45 over there, it has the same password, QWERTY1 exclamation point. If I click submit and look within our console, okay. You'll see that we're still getting 43, and I think this has something to do with our sessions over here. Our session's not actually being cleared out. So let's go ahead and delete this session. Move this back on over. We're going to try this one more time. Let's head on over to login, type in testing2, QWERTY1 exclamation point, and now we should see an ID of 45, perfect. Okay, so basically us trying to log in over and over again without actually clearing our session was preventing us from actually seeing the correct session ID within the terminal. So really what we wanna do next is we wanna provide the user with a method to be able to log out. And we also wanna be able to prevent access to login and register as soon as they log in because they don't really need to log in once they've done it already and they don't really need to register for account if they are already using one at the time being. So that's what we'll implement within the next episode and continuing further on really amping up this project, we'll head back on over to our login page and return user errors called flash messages as long as they're unable to log in. So if they click submit and they get redirected here, we'll return to them an error saying credentials are missing, but if they're inserting information here and the information is also incorrect, we'll return to them a different message saying the username or password is incorrect. So there are two more things to be looking forward to. We'll be implementing a logout button. We'll be implementing conditional rendering up here for a header based on whether or not the user is logged in. And then we'll also be implementing flash messages within this login page right here. So I hope you guys are excited and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Peace.